Well, for this episode, we're going to focus on North County. From Delmarra on up to Oceanside is what I consider to be North County. Always been a hotbed of surfers. Obviously, Rob Machado, Taylor Knox, just to name a few. It goes all the way back to Varan. Um, it goes back further to uh, Cheer Critchlow, all the way back to Rusty Miller, cover Surfer Magazine. Hi, I'm Isaac Wood. Uh, my role here is basically a little bit of everything. For me, it's like this is the Surfer's Comic Con. You know, you get to come here into the sanctuary and just nerd out on weirdest stuff around. And then you get like your idols like Joel and Gudowskis brother. I mean, all these guys, they all come in and all the ego drops and everybody does the same thing. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. You know, and it all hits the floor. And, <laughs> you know, kind of get the same feeling I get every day coming in. This one came in initially um, not that long ago. I haven't had it for probably more than five years. Uh, funny thing is now that this board is, is so current, once again, the dimensions on it at 19 and a half, two and five eighths by six foot three, puts it right back into you know where most people would want a board like this right now. This is a board shaped by Gary Hannell, and uh, this is his takeoff on a bonzer. And you'll notice that the fin itself is cut out and there's foam. So it's just a really fun, high performance bonzer board. Um, this board, I'm thinking, might have been a team board for somebody because there is so much detail into it, yet it doesn't have any manufacturer's logo on it. That's interesting right there. I'm just noticing this right now. L-I-G-H-T. So there's the logo. Incorporated in the, the moonlight, they put the Gary Hanna logo right into the moonlight. Learn something new every day. This one was definitely my favorite board out of all of them. Uh, I've never ridden a Bonzer before, but it was actually a sick board. It, like, it was super cruisy, but went on the rail nice. And the other boards, I would say you had to baby them a lot more than this one. You could get your speed and kind of do like whatever you're kind of feeling on this board. So yeah, cheers. Great board, great company, legacy. Well, the Hanson brand is synonymous with North County, of course. Don Hanson being uh, one of the earliest producers of surfboards in the North County, San Diego area. So I've always had an affinity for him. The workmanship uh, in his boards has always been top notch. Always had the best shapers. So what's unique about this board in a couple of aspects is that it still has a model number on it or a name to it called the uh, Hustler, I think that's what it is. This is transition board right around 67, maybe 68 even, right before boards went short. This would be as high performance as you could get at that time. I had never seen that one, I guess, and so the story was it was stashed up at uh, Rip Curl or somewhere. Bird had loaned it to him for a display and then forgot about it. And then somebody saw it and took it back. And then that particular board, I think it sat away for like over 10 years. After the first couple of waves, I was kind of tripping on how good it worked. I could tell right away if it's funky or not. But that one, as the session went on, the board felt better and better. So I ended up stealing it for the weekend, taking the same cruise. Yeah. And there's order up there for the old board. And it worked great, actually. Uh, I'm super thankful you guys have it. Don, uh, the Hanson family made some cool shit in their day. Most of those old boards are pretty doggone good. Uh, yeah, roughly the dims on this are going to be at 9 foot 6 in length, to give or take an inch or so. Going to be at 22 and a half, maybe 22 and 3 quarter. And then you're looking at a solid 3, maybe 3 and an eighth on the thickness. The Hanson fin system, which was uh, their own design, a screw all the way through the top of the board into the fin. And you can see the profile of the fin, definitely a high performance type of a board. Very, very light for its time, really flexy. So the combination of flex in the tail, flex in the bend in the board made this thing like the go-to. This would be your hot rod Hanson at that time. Relatively decent entry rocker, a flatter bottom than what it would appear to have. Feeling the rails, you would think that it'd have more of a rolled bottom, but by this time in surfing, they'd gotten really beyond that and they started to understand how much better a flat bottom board worked. And then it goes into actual a V, almost a spiral V out the tail. So it, it had all the bells and whistles to make it a hot rod. This is a sunset model. Um, sunset Fish, Sunset Surfboards, Eddie Wright, uh, legendary surf shop. There isn't a person out of the North County uh, that is worth their salt that doesn't know Sunset and uh, know of their reputation. Brian is still building the Sunset label on occasion, 
and he worked for Rip Curl, so in between that he makes great boards. It's been ridden, uh, obviously. It was a knee board, ridden as designed as a knee board. It's short, probably about 5'2", 21 inches wide, and probably about 2 and 3 quarters thick, which is quite a bit thinner, shorter, and a little bit narrower than what you would expect a fish to be. I like it. There's no leash plug on it, which uh, keeps in the time frame. This is going to be an early fish. So um, I would have to put it back probably somewhere in 72. Uh, when he pulled it out, I was super excited to ride it because it's a fish, you know, made for the same way as I grew up on, I guess. I was a little bit worried because it was really straight through the last two thirds of the board towards the tail. So I was thinking it was maybe going to be difficult to turn, but it actually turned pretty well. The apex of the rail was really low and the rocker and outline being super flat and straight, that was kind of maybe a worry, but there was no edge in the tail all the way through, so it kind of loosened it up and maybe made it more forgiving than what the outline rocker suggested, I guess. It's just a neat little board. These types of boards are the boards that I'm uh, the most proud of of the shed because this was brought down and donated to me by the shaper himself, Alan Gibbons. He just walked in one day and goes, you know, you, I'd like to have this board in your shop. And to me, that's the ultimate form of respect. Alan, this is for you. I want to say it's 6.0 by probably about 19 and a half and probably about two and a half thick. It's a uh, EPS sandwich constructed board. So it's like three pounds thick. Sandwich construction, it's uh, fiberglass and uh, resin and foam, like a surfboard, but it's done with different materials that are vacuum bagged together to give it the shell. He's taking it all the way to running fiberglass to the tail. So the flex in the tail is crazy. It's going to be an extremely sensitive board to ride. It looked like something completely different than I've seen from any other boards. Kind of like a, a wakeboard style rail, really flat off the bottom with the surfboard outline. When you're like in the pocket or setting up to go off the top or try and air, you could feel the, the spring off the flex, the tail, but trying to put it on rail or do a carve, it got pretty sticky. Flex and torque, torsionally, whatever way you can get it, will, will give you snap. So the board will fit in a tighter pocket, nice and easy, and then as you come out of a turn, it, it go into a turn, it loads up, you come out of a turn and it releases. And it's very, very fascinating to watch people go back to some designs and incorporate them into, um, into everyday boards again. The moral of the story is that everything rides, you know, and you should expand your horizons, expand your surfing, you know, uh, capabilities and, and the ideas that are out there.